everybody, we are in Arizona now, in the wonderful city of Tempe. My guest speaker today spent his entire career on doing a scientific research what makes people to say yes to requests. And his well-known books, Influence and Persuasion, were translated in 41 languages and sold in more than 5 million copies. And you know him as the godfather of influence, Pridmi Robert Cialdini. Thank you, Tatiana. Hello, Good to Robert. be with you. Thank you for accepting invitation for the interview. Uh, so, my, my first question to you. Uh, about 35 years ago, yeah. you wrote this world bestseller, Influence. And in that book, you mentioned six universal principles of persuasion. Yes. Could you please remind to our viewers these principles? Surely. First is the principle of reciprocation. Okay. It says that if you want people to give to you, first give to them. Okay. Then they will feel a sense of gratitude, a sense of obligation to give back. For example, there was a study done in a candy shop in Southern California. Uh, when, when customers came in one day, they were given a small piece of chocolate and they bought 42% more candy than any wow. other day. Hmm? Okay. So if you give first, mm -hmm. you receive. Secondly is the principle of liking. People want to say yes to those they know and like. So you should do something to cause people to like you first before you make a request of them. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, a simple way is, is to give them a compliment. Okay. So, I'm not sure what the norms are in restaurants for tipping a waiter after a meal. Are they, in the United States, we give 15 to 20% after mm -hmm. the meal. We have found that if a waiter compliments a, a customer on an order and says, oh, that's a good choice, okay. his tip goes up significantly wow. because people like those who oh, compliment okay. them and then they give to those who they like. Mm -hmm. Next principle is the principle of social proof or consensus. Mm -hmm. The idea that if you want people to say yes to you, show them that many other people have oh. said yes to you. Right? Okay. So for example, or at least that they have believed or chosen the th same thing that you want people to, mm -hmm. to believe or, or choose. So there was a study done in Beijing, China. Okay. Uh, restaurant owners put a little sign a little mark next to certain items on the menu and that little mark caused people to buy those items 13 to 20 percent higher rates what did the mark say this is one of our most popular items I can't. that's all and it was true so simply pointing to what others mm -hmm. around you like you are doing will cause you to move in that direction. Okay. So that's the principle of social proof. Then there's the principle of authority. Right? Uh, you can get people to move in your direction if you can show them evidence that experts, authorities on the topic, have said that this is a good choice to move in, in your mm -hmm. direction. So for example, the Bose Acoustics Corporation, which sells mm -hmm. high-end audio equipment in the United States, had an ad for a new product. It was uh, the Bose Wave music system, and they were not very happy with the results of that ad until they added uh, a, a set of testimonials from experts in the field of audition or technology, mm -hmm. and then sales skyrocket. Hmm? So, if we can collect information about what the authorities are doing mm -hmm. and present that before we present our case, we will be more successful. Right? Wow. Uh, a fifth principle is the principle of scarcity. Mm -hmm. People will say yes to you more if you can show them that what you have is scarce mm -hmm. or rare or unique or even just dwindling in availability. Okay. They'll want it more. <laughs> So there was an international supermarket chain mm -hmm. 
that did a study of all the different promotions that they used to sell products over the years. And there was one that was by far the most successful. If they wrote on a little card below items on the shelf, only three items per customer. Oh. <laughs> they got the most response from that. So what's scarce is attractive. Mm -hmm. uh, and then finally is commitment and consistency. Okay. People want to be consistent with what they have already said or done. Mm -hmm. There was a study done in Chicago here in the United States by a restaurant owner. He had a problem. People who would call and book a table and then they wouldn't appear for it. They, they wouldn't call ahead um, mm -hmm. to cancel. So he asked his receptionist to change what she said when she took a booking over the phone. Mm -hmm. Previously, she said, please call if you have to change or cancel your reservation. Mm -hmm. He asked her to say, will you please call if you have to change or cancel res your mm -hmm. reservation? And then he asked her to pause so that people would say yes, mm -hmm. da, right? Da. Da, of course. Okay. No shows dropped by 67% because people had made a commitment, oh. public commitment. Now they wanted to live up to it, to be consistent with it. So those are the six principles. Wow, it is fantastic. Very interesting. And um, today we are living in a fast-changing environment, very competitive. And in order to stay in place, we need to run fast. Yeah. In order to move forward, we need to run uh, twi twice as much as that. And uh, in this high competitive environment, what is the most powerful principle of persuasion? Has something changed since the influence was yes. published? I wouldn't say that the principles have changed in their power, mm -hmm. but one of the principles has become more available to us, and that's the principle of social proof because of the internet. Okay. We now if it's the case that people will say yes to us, if we can show them evidence that others okay. have said yes, now we can show them mm -hmm. uh, ratings on Amazon. There are, there are various kinds of testimonials that we can show them online and in, on our websites and mm -hmm. so on. And that's the thing that I think is the most um, available principle to us now. What we can show on our websites of people around the world and what they have said about our products or services. Yeah. And it's a very powerful tool. If you manage to get this, I think you can spread your products. Uh, exactly the right. Okay. People want to know what others like them have done. Mm -hmm. It reduces their uncertainty mm -hmm. about what they should do. If everybody around you is raving about a new restaurant or a new yeah. uh, app or a new uh, film, well, you'll think that that's probably good yeah, for me too. Yeah, I would be too. very interested yeah, to yeah. try. Okay. And um, in order to collect uh, information for your world bestseller influence, you worked for three years undercover yeah. and you worked in uh, car dealers, in telemarketing companies, and you watched how persuasion works in a real life situation. Yes. So what is, based on your observation, what is the most um, common feature of the top uh, persuaders? The, the, the experts, the truly oh, yes. good, the ones who stand out from Excellent. their peers. Yeah. That's an interesting question because it has to do not what they put into their message, mm -hmm. it's what they put into the moment before they send their message. Okay. If they arrange for their audience to be put in a state of mind that is consistent with the message they are about to send, then they will have readied that audience for the message ahead of time and the most successful of all the influence practitioners that I saw did this. They didn't just work on tailoring their message, mm -hmm. they worked on what they put immediately before sending their message. That was the key.
Okay, and it brings us to the next question. Uh, you uh, write your books and you compare your books with trees. So first you planted influence and uh, like after 30 or 32 years after you planted Persuasion. Yes. So, and can you also explain um, just a, a bit in more details how persuasion works and how is it possible to bring people to yes before they even know what is in your message? Yeah. How is it possible? So that's this idea that uh -huh. we were talking about a minute ago of what the truly excellent persuaders did. Mm -hmm. It was that they, of course, used the six principles in their message, but they did something first. They put people in mind of, they drew attention to an idea mm -hmm. that would later be in their message. And this is how um, it's possible to, to get people to agree with a message before they experience it. Mm -hmm. okay? It sounds like some sort of magic, right? Mm -hmm. It isn't. It's solid behavioral science. Because for one thing, the communicator knows mm -hmm. what will be in his or her message before it is sent. Yes. So the communicator can put people in a state of mind mm -hmm. that is consistent with the message that they are about to hear and they will be more ready for it as a consequence. Okay. And can you give a, an example from yes. your personal life, how you use persuasion to save you in a challenging situation? I'll give you two examples. Okay. One comes from a research study that shows how this works. It was done by an online um, furniture store. Okay. One week this was, they sent all of the visitors to their landing page mm -hmm. to uh, a picture of their landing page with fluffy clouds, okay. soft fluffy clouds mm -hmm. in the background wallpaper. The other half were sent to a landing page that had small coins in the oh. background, okay. pennies, you know, mm -hmm. small. Okay. Those people who the first thing they saw on the website mm -hmm. was soft, fluffy clouds mm -hmm. chose to purchase more comfortable furniture. Ah, because it's like comfort. It's because comfort was put in their mind. Okay. Those who saw pennies mm -hmm. chose to purchase inexpensive furniture okay. because cost was put wow. in their minds. So that was a study. Now, what have I done in my yes, life? Yes, it's to interesting. Do this? Yeah. It was a challenge. I had a challenge with a, a, a set of uh, people that I was negotiating with. My team was mm -hmm. negotiating with them, and we had okay. always had problems with them in the past. They wanted more than we wanted to give them, uh, and, and this, the yeah. usual <laughs> negotiation. Mm -hmm. And what typically happened was we would negotiate at their headquarters, okay. and we would come in. My team would arrange ourselves on one side of the table. Okay. Their team would come in, mm -hmm. arrange themselves on the other side okay. of the table. And I realized what I was arranging for them persuasively was the psychology of difference, of opposition. Mm -hmm. We were over here, they were yeah, over It was op opponents. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, what I asked my team to do on this particular day, we came to the meeting room, we were the first there, I asked them to take every other chair. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, then our partners came in, they said, oh. what is this? <laughs> but they didn't say, get, get to your side. <laughs> okay. They came and they sat among us. Ah. And now, the psychology, the persuasive psychology, mm -hmm. was cooperation and unity, and we had the best negotiation wow. we had ever had. It's very interesting how this location of people could influence on the result of negotiation. Yeah. It's fantastic. Okay, and um, one more question. So uh, your principles are universal, and they can be used in mm. business and also in private life. Yes. Could you give an example how, how, for example, a man could use your persuasion principle to get a phone number from a lady on the street, which is not an easy situation not nowadays. Not easy. No, not any longer. Um, there is, 
a study that was done in France that offers two answers to that question. Mm -hmm. right? So if there's a, 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 a young woman walking down the street and this young man would like to ask her for her phone number, mm -hmm. he should wait until she passes a flower shop. Okay. Why? Why? Because flowers are associated with romance. Ah. And research done in, in, in France, Marseille, found that he will be twice as effective getting really? her phone number mm -hmm. if he asks her when flowers are in her mind. Okay. Romance. That was one study. There's another study they also did. Mm -hmm. This time, they had the young man walk up and ask for her phone number. He said, I think you're very pretty. I wonder if you would mm -hmm. give me your phone number so I can call you for a date. <clears throat> Just as in the previous study. Mm -hmm. But this time he was carrying something that increased his success double. A guitar case. Oh. Why? Because music is associated with romance. Fantastic. So, if you put in a person's mind an idea that's associated with your goal before mm -hmm. you ask for your goal, <laughs> by the way, Mm -hmm. This also works for young women who oh. would like a man to ask her for a date. Okay, I'll take my pen now. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Do you have speed dating in Russia, the idea of speed dating? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So there was a study in which young women mm -hmm. were coached, they were trained to imitate the speech and body language of the man that they were talking to okay. on this this speed date. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. If they did that, they were rated more attractive okay. and they were contacted significantly more often for a date because there was, <laughs> there was sim mm -hmm. a simpatico. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was a connection, similarity. Okay. Similarity, similarity of speech, seconds. similarity of body parts. Fantastic. You have so many interesting examples and all your books, they are based on science, on scientific research. Yes. And uh, could you uh, tell us uh, the example, uh, your favorite one, the example which um, made uh, the most impression yeah. on you? I do have one that I consider especially powerful because it has to do with a conflict that has been so stubborn no one has been able to resolve it, and that is the conflict on the West Bank of Israel between the Palestinians and the Israelis, right? Mm -hmm. Decades long conflict. No one's been able to reduce that conflict. Well, there's a researcher named uh, uh, Lee Ross at Stanford University. He went to uh, the Middle East, mm -hmm. and he had a, an experiment in which he brought in Israelis and Palestinians, okay. and he said, I'm going to give you a certain amount of money, and it's your task to negotiate to see how much of it goes to Palestine and how much of it goes to Israel on the West Bank. Mm -hmm. The Israelis wanted the money for security and defense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Palestinians wanted the money for education and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, food and so on. And when they would negotiate, the great majority of the time, 65% of the time, mm -hmm. they could not come to an answer, and so no one won. Nobody got any money. Okay. Oh. So they took money from their own people mm -hmm. so that their enemies or their opponents would not get more money. Mm. No one got money okay. unless the researchers did one thing. Before the negotiations began, they said to both sides, this will be a difficult negotiation, but I can tell you that in the past, most of our teams have come to an agreement, even mm -hmm. though that wasn't true, but mm -hmm. just told them there's social proof for the idea that a negotiation can be agreed on. Mm -hmm. right? So now, instead of 
only 35% of the time was there a successful negoti negotiation. Now 75% of the time. So here is social here proof. Is people decide if other people can do it, like mm -hmm. me, then I can do it too. It's very interesting. Uh, so many interesting things. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, we could talk, I think, forever. I think we could. <laughs> and uh, uh, I would like to ask you, so um, you have uh, two fantastic books, uh, Influence and Persuasion. But where else we can learn from you? Where can we get information? No. Do you have courses? So where can we learn yes. from you? We do have courses. We mm -hmm. have a two-day workshop called okay. the Principle of, Principles of Persuasion mm -hmm. Workshop. And we have a, um, a website, okay. influenceatwork.com. Okay. Influence at work is all one word. Okay. Dot com. And there you Perfect. can find all kinds of things that we have available. Okay, uh, excellent. Thank you very much, Robert. At, at the end of the interview, I can't let you go without signing these two fantastic books, Persuasion and Influence. That. You know, I love them both. And <laughs> if I have to choose, I wouldn't be able to do so. These books, they are really... Um, changing lives uh, and they not only skyrocket your profit but they skyrocket your life. Well that makes and, uh, <laughs> me feel great in my heart. It's my pleasure. Could you please sign them for me? Yes, of course. Thank you very much, Robert, for your time, for this very fascinating interview. I hope to see you one more time. I wish you all the best, and I wish you to find one more seat for your next trip. Oh. We are waiting for this trip. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you.